Okay, hi, I hope you guys have been enjoying the lessons so far. I'm really doing my best to really make this GMAT website a nice place where everybody can just sit back, you know, take off your shoes and just learn some maths. Okay, now, I hope that it's only out of hard work and out of consistency that you take your time to really grasp the concepts, the previous lessons that I've shown you. And it's only then when we go into further topics like integral vector couplers, the viewer like you should be able to understand what's going on okay so now moving along we're gonna now conclude or let's not really say conclude but really paint a whole picture on this three-dimensional frame the three-dimensional space that we are given when dealing with vector calculus now we did talk about the two terms which is velocity and acceleration in um applying that to three-dimensional space in vectors and then after that i moved on to talk about curvature something new and now i'm going to talk about again another new term and this time it's called torsion Okay? Now, unlike velocity and acceleration where you can make the switch fairly fast, fairly quickly if you have been studying kinematics in two, dimensional, two dimensions, torsion takes a bit of a while to really grasp what, what's going on, what the term really means. Okay? So, this is what it means, what torsion is all about. Okay? Now, we have defined the two unit vectors such as the unit tangent and the unit normal. Okay, over here like that. But when we're in three-dimensional space, okay, and there's a point over here which has the corresponding tangent vector, unit tangent and the unit normal, let's just say the trajectory goes like that. There's obviously another vector that we can define to form this, you know, a three-dimensional frame, and that is what we like to call the binomial vector. Okay, three vectors over here, the binomial vector over here like this. Now, much like the IJK components, the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the unit unit binomial, okay, which is spelled as binormal, not to be confused with the binomial theorem, so I'll try to make up, try my best to pronounce it as binormal vector, okay, also forms a frame, okay. Now this frame is called the free net frame. The free net frame. Quite a elegant and catchy name. I don't know if you've been playing video games, a free net frame. Okay. Let's talk a bit about the free net frame. Now we know that these three vectors are mutually perpendicular, okay? However, there is a difference of this frame and the IJK component frame, like goes something like that. IJK components. Okay? The difference between these two frames is that the free net frame is a right-handed frame. Okay? Let's just call it as a right-handed frame. And the IJK, IJK is called a left-handed frame. So, what do you mean by this? Well, if we write out and we need to define the frame correctly, and I really want to make sure that the foundation definitions are really strong so that the viewer or when you study more about this, you're really strong with the foundations. What we would like to write is we put a bracket here and we write something like this, T followed by N followed by B, okay, where the order is of vital importance, okay? Like I said, the order is of vital importance over here like this. Okay, now we say that the vectors T, N, and B form a right-handed basis of three mutually perpendicular vectors. And what does that mean? That means is that if you use your right hand to represent the three vectors over here, where your index represents the first vector, your middle represents the second vector, your thumb will represent the third vector. In this case, it's the binomial. Okay? Look at this. T goes in this direction, N goes in this direction, so T goes like that, N goes like that, so the binomial is going up. And that is what I mean where I use my right hand or a right-handed basis to represent these three mutually perpendicular vectors. Comparing that to a left-handed basis of three mutually perpendicular vectors, I'm just doing the same, but I'm just using my left hand. Meaning to say if that this frame is spelled out as IJK, Using my left hand, the index is i, the middle is j, my thumb will represent the vector k, which is the case over here. i goes in this way, j goes in this way, k goes up in this way. Okay? So, just to make that clear, a left-handed basis and a right-handed basis of three mutually perpendicular vectors. Now, obviously, the torsion is not about that. Okay? What torsion is about is that like how curvature or the radius of curvature describes the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector, torsion is something that describes the binomial vector. Now, I know that at this point of time, it's a bit difficult to, to see what it describes about the binomial vector. It could describe anything. 
change in magnitude, change in length, change in direction, but we shall really formally state out what the binomial vector means, or what the torsion means, or how it relates directly to the binomial vector. As always, and as with all mathematics, we would really try to show you the rule, the definition, the theory, and from there, we will try to formulate a graphical or geometric representation for what torsion really means. So first, just bear with me, and I know that you may not understand the geometrical representation, just bear with me on how we derive torsion, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, now using the famous theory of the dot product, we dot two vectors together, we get the magnitude of that vector squared. Okay, in this case, let it be the binomial. So the binomial, all this is written in terms of as dot with itself, okay, we are given the magnitude of the binomial squared. Okay, fair enough. Okay, and binomial, again, like I said, is of unit length. Okay, all this is of unit length, which is T and as well as the unit tangent and the unit normal. So what does that mean? That means is that now this is equal to 1. And from here, like how we did with the unit tangent and the unit normal, we can differentiate this. Now using the, the pr chain pr product rule, we differentiate the first one. Okay, and then we dot it with the second one. Add up, keep the first one, and then dot with the, the derivative of the second one. Okay, and this is equals to zero because differentiate one is zero. Now this adds up equals to two, okay, and two equals to zero. I mean two we can divide it by we can divide both sides by two gives us zero on the other side. So that would simply give us this. Our first result in really finding out this torsion, this mystical quantity or this geometric vector quantity. Okay, now what does this mean? This means that B or the first derivative of b with respect to s, okay, is perpendicular to the binomial. This is just what it means. We are using this information right here, which we'll use in the other in the other to make the whole theory. So this simply tells us that the first derivative of the binomial vector is perpendicular to the binomial vector. Okay, now the second one. Okay, now see. The thing is this, we are always start out with equations and then we really differentiate the equations to get new new theories. What do I mean? Take for example, we are given the position vector, we differentiate, we differentiate, we get the acceleration. It's something like what we're going to do now. Okay, now carefully writing the binomial as a cross product. Okay, now keeping in mind the right-handed frame, so I will need to take t cross with n. It gives me the, bino the binomial vector, okay? So the binomial vector can be written as the unit tangent vector, okay, cross with the unit normal vector, okay? So my apologies, I should have been mentioning unit binomial, okay? But since it's um, so, many t so many things to say, unit, unit, unit tangent, unit normal, if I say binomial, if I say tangent, I'm all referring to unit length, okay? So I've got this thing over here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to differentiate this, Okay, again using the product rule. So, differentiate once with respect to s, okay? That will give me differentiate t cross with n, add up with, keep t, and cross with the first derivative of n. Okay, so at least that is a step. We've got something like this over here. Now, we need to somehow interpret this thing over here, okay? by using the previous definitions. So what do we know about the unit normal vector? Well, we have previously defined as the unit normal vector, okay, is equals to one over kappa times the first derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to x. Now we already have defined that, and we already have did a lot of definitions on the, the unit normal vector. So now we just use this definition because we have already proven that. So we bring the kappa over, okay, so dtts equals to kappa times that. So this, now the dtds is exactly over here. First derivative of the unit tangent vector. So we can write this as kappa times, kappa is a scalar function, okay, times with the unit normal vector and cross it by the unit normal vector again. Okay, and then after that we have the unit the unit tangent vector and the first derivative of the unit normal vector. Okay. Give me a second while I check on my book because I want to get this really cleared up over here. We leave this as it is, over here like this. Okay, you will see why in a minute. Okay, but it doesn't matter because now we got this thing over here. 
What is good about this is that the same vector when we cross it by itself, we get the zero vector. So that is to say that the first derivative of the binomial vector, unit binomial vector, is equals to the unit tangent vector and we cross that with the first derivative of the normal vector. Okay, everything seems to fall into place, but now it takes some, really some geometric inspection. Okay, I would like to call that geometric ins inspection to really demystify what's going on.